Hey folks, Barry here. How you doing? When I started this channel, it was me. I would do the videos by myself at night um, with me playing as myself and Jen. And, you know, I just film the games that way. And I wanted to get back to that um, somewhat because of scheduling with Jen. It's a little difficult. And I'd like to get the channel a little more active than it is. But some of it is, while playing with Jen, I can't really explain my thought process. Because she's right there, and she'll learn, and then she'll beat me even worse than she does now. Um, so I, I kind of miss that, explaining my thought process as I'm doing things and, and stuff like that. So what I decided to do is go with another segment of solo playing. Now these games may not be uh, meant for solo playing they may be you know some of them are strictly one player games some of them will be multiplayer games you know uh, co-op games and stuff like that that i can play solo um some of them may be one player against another player you know confrontational games i i, I don't know exactly what games will be on here i know i have a few in my short list that would be on this type of segment now the first one is going to be 51st state the master set are you playing the, a solo variant of that where uh, basically there's going to be a phantom player who's going to attack you every round and try and destroy one of your locations on the board um, so that'll be the first one and we'll see how it goes from there but I hope you enjoy it um, let me know in the comments if you do and here we go without further ado, 51st State with the New Error expansion, the Solo Variant. Alright folks, here we go with 51st State. I do apologize with some of the background noise. I got the air conditioner on. It's a little warm in here. And the cat is in his mischievous state. I don't know. Does it once or twice a day. Which is that. Means can't help it. Alright, so we're playing the solo version of 51st State with the new error um, deck. Shuffled in. Okay, When I originally bought the original version of 51st State, it was kind of on its decline, where it was uh, it was out of print constantly and stuff like that. So I never had a chance to play any of the expansions, just the original version of 51st State. So the cards that you will see today will be the first time for me and you, if the, you've never played the game before. Alright, so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of overview. You'll just see how it works as it's being played. Rodney Smith has done the next one video for the game. For the multiplayer version, the uh, solitaire version works a little differently, but for the most part, it's the same concept. All right, so over here we have our resources. Okay, we have iron, gas, brick, and guns. We also have workers, which are not a resource. Okay, they're a separate deal. Then we have our contact uh, tokens over here. Okay, one for uh, building, one for trading, and then one for uh, raising. All right, we have police shields, which you will not use with just the regular 51st state game. These will take effect with the expansions. I'm interested to see how they come into play and all that. Then we have like a wild card for our contact tokens. We also have a wild card for our resources. And we have these demolition tokens, which can be used during building, which you'll see in a little bit. All right, I am the Mutant Union. I'll be playing against the Appalachian Federation. Now, you don't need to use the player board in a solo game. I just do this to keep track of open productions. So you see here, we have a spot for production where you'll lay your cards to the right of that. That's the only reason I use the player board, just so I know which are open productions in case I want to use them. Which I don't often because it'll cost me a point. But you never know if you really need them. Okay. We play our player markers here on zero off the board. And then we have our two contact cards types, okay, one for trading and one for raising. Just got them all set up for now, okay. The only thing I have to do to finish setup is I actually have to combine 
the 51st state base deck with the uh, new era deck and if you look down here in little print you will see the different names of the deck okay now once I come I shuffle them all together then I'll draw six of these cards I'll keep four discarding the other two and we'll be ready to play okay so give me a second I'll be back with that one more final uh, thing before we get started this is a pre-order copy of 51st state um, from my understanding, there's not a lot of huge differences. There's two different factions that come with the board. Uh, these tokens are actually just cardboard chits instead of these tokens with the stickers on them. And um, the resources are just plain instead of having this printing on it. Other than that, and, and there's like three mini expansions. But other than that, the base game and the pre-order game are the same version. The uh, same thing, okay? Not talking, let's get gaming. Here we go. Nice big stack. There's 150 cards in here. There's 100 from 51st State, to, you know, the base. And then there are um, 50 cards from the New Era the expansion. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, I lost track of count there. Okay. So here are my six starter cards. Out of these, I have to choose. To keep four of them and then get rid of two. All right, we got a nice mix. These four are from the base game. These two I've never seen before. They're from the new era. So let me see. If we look at the mutants here, they will produce three workers, a gun, a gray contact co token, and a card every round. Okay, now in order for me to get a great contact token, I got to spend two gears, two iron, to get two great contact tokens, and that's what you need to build. So I might want to keep the docks here, so every round I'll produce at least one of those two uh, iron resources, so I can build. All right, uh, I'm already getting a gun, and that'll give me three contact tokens, three red contact tokens. To make a deal, I need uh, one gas for one one uh, blue contact token. So I think I'm going to hold that. Okay. Now I could also take Ricky the Merchant. Okay, he'll give me one blue contact token each round during production. So might keep him. These are actually most pretty good cards here. All right. The Deserted Colony is an action. If I spend a dude, I'll gain one, um, you know, a wild card resource. I think I'm going to keep that one. Okay, so if that's the case, I could team it up with that and do the build action. Okay. This one's a card every round, and it's a bonus production of, of an additional card when you build it. Uh, could be good, could be bad, you know, each round, each, you know, every, and whenever you want, you can spend two dudes to get a card or a, a resource, either one. So let me think about the pub here. Okay, the foundation's a new one. I haven't seen this. One. Let's see what it is. It's a feature. I get a building bonus to place one of those uh, demolition tokens on this location. You may spend it during your turn do not discard all right so what happens is when i build this i'll place one of these demolition tokens on this and then unlike most resources at the end of the round you get rid of them during the cleanup phase you could hold this on and then use it whenever you want and then the card's pretty much done and you could actually just use it on that to build something if you wanted to all right and then finally we got the corner shop if i spend a dude and one of the four resources i gain a victory point okay and i could do that every round and maybe activate it up to twice so each round i gain two victory points theoretically you know if i spend the resources so that is a pretty good card i could also use it to get a uh a wild resource if i want to so you know what i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna keep these three or these four rather this will be my starting hand. These other two will go 
to a discard pile. Okay, so that is the end of the setup. Now we're going to actually get into the game. The first thing you do is the lookout phase. And this is the same with the multiplayer, only the card number is a little different. In the solo version, you will draw four of the cards. Okay, and then I will choose one. I'll be the first player. I actually should have brought out the first player marker showing that. But during a solo game, you're, the human player is always the first player. All right, so we have Shadow. I can spend one red contact po token to gain a point, maybe activate it twice. I have Slave Merchant, which is a feature. Each time you make a deal, you gain a worker. I have Rubble Trader, which is an action. I spend a brick to gain a victory point. And then finally, I have Parking Lot, which is a production. So I will gain one gear for each gear symbol, which is this symbol here in my state. So if I had four cards with this symbol on it, every round during the production phase, I gain four gears, four iron resources. All right, so what I think I'm going to do is being I could spend a gun to gain three contact tokens, three red contact tokens. I can use this card here to spend two of them each round and get a two points. So I think I want to take that one. Okay, so that'll go into my hand of cards. Now these three will get shuffled. Okay, and it's kind of weird shuffling three cards, but that's what it, you know. All right, and then we'll take the top one and give it to him. So he has the slave merchant. Okay, so we just place it up there in his uh, area there. Again, it's not open to production, so I'm not really too worried about it. I can raise it if I want it. It's really not much of a benefit to that. All right, so out of the last two cards, i got to pick another one. Again, I need the iron resource to get building contact tokens. I'll take that one. He'll get this one. It's an action. Again, I really don't have to worry about it. Give it to him. And then finally, he gets one drawn from the top of the stack. Okay, and this is the gunsmith. It's an action. Spend one gun to get one contact token. Maybe activate it twice, okay? Doesn't really matter for him. He does not produce anything. Doesn't use any of his cards. He's pretty stupid. He's just here to attack us. That's it. All right, so that was the lookout phase of the game. Now we go into production. So if I had any production cards out here or any deals, I would gain the... the uh, Resource listed on the deal or the production cards, but I don't have any of them So we go to the product to our player board and we get what the player board says. So I get three workers Okay, I get one gun One gray contact token and I get one card from the top of the deck and I have the post office Which is an action I spend a, gain, a guy to gain a blue contact token. I could activate that twice. So that was the resources. Now we go into the action phase. There's uh, several different actions I can take. So I had enough resources here. I can place a gun down. I can spend one gun to gain three uh, contact tokens, red contact tokens. Then I would simply take the three red contact tokens place it on my board they're there for me to use at a later date okay alternatively say later on i had two gears in the mutant union's case these differ from faction to faction if i had two gears in i could grab two gray contact tokens place it on my board and then finally i could do um the gas for the trade contact tokens, the blue contact tokens, you can do each one of these once. Okay, it was a little unclear with that in the rule book. Um, some people thought that you can only do any of these three. You could do this once, this whole action. Okay, you can only do one of the three once. But it's not that really the case. You can do one of these actions one time. Okay. If I don't want to do that, I can spend two guys to gain any resource I want. Remember, workers aren't resources, just the guns, brick, gas, and, and uh, iron. Or, alternatively, I could spend two guys to get a card. Um, if I had any action cards down here, 
I could follow what's on the action card and do that as an action. Okay, I could raise cards in my hand. Okay, so what I would need to do is spend the number of contact tokens, red contact tokens, equal to the distance of the car, and then I get the spoils for it. Alright, so in this case, if I spent two raise tokens, I would get the spoils for this card, which would be two blue contact tokens and a card, and then I discard the card. I also can build, okay, for that I need the gray contact tokens. So, I would spend the number of gray contact tokens equal to the distance here, again two. I spend two gray tokens, and then I'd place this far down in my state which is my tableau here. And in this case, it's an action, so I place it down here, down where it says actions. If it were production, it would be up here. Feature would be in the middle. The other action I can do is raise an opponent. Okay, as you can see here, there are numbers in the shields here. Okay, I'd have to spend that many number of red contact tokens in order to raise that location. Let's say this is my opponent's board. He had a production car down. I wanted to raise it. I'd spend a number of contact tokens and then flip this guy over. It, it was raised. Before I did that, I would gain the spoils of it. Now, in the solo game, he doesn't get the resources and the deals. But if it were a multiplayer game, that player would get the deal. Okay, so that's basically raising. Now, if he raises me, which may come up, which most likely will come up during this game, I do the same thing. I flip the, the card over, but I would get the resource in the deal section of it. And then finally, I can make deals. So I spend distance tokens, blue distance tokens, equal to the value of the distance, and I get whatever's in the blue section. Slide it underneath my, my board, and then every round... During the production phase, I would also get whatever's in the blue section. Almost forgot the contact cards here. I can also spend two workers to buy a contact card if I want to. And I want to do that because during a solo game, for every contact card that is not out there, each turn, the, the opponent there will... Take one of these and discard it, and then I'll get two points. All right, so potentially you can get four points every round just for the contact cards. And then he'll start attacking us, and attacking me, rather. And if he succeeds, he'll get two points also. If I do a trade, you know, if I use an open production for him, he'll gain one point. Okay, instead of getting a worker, he'll get a point. All right, so that's, one, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I am going to well, take the merchants here, place it in my hand, place that there showing I used two dudes. Okay, now he's up, he's going to grab the punks here, and that'll give him two points, he's on the board already. Okay, now I think I'm going to use that merchants, I don't really want to build too much, because again, like I said, he's going to attack us, and I'll show you how that works in a minute you know once we start building stuff but basically what will happen is he'll draw a card off the top of the deck and then if i have any cards in my state here that matches the symbols on the card that he drew he'll raise it automatically i'll get the resource in the blue the card will get discarded he'll get two points and then he'll stop okay he'll pass meaning i couldn't trade with him or anything like that but also he will not attack me um He'll do this up to three times. If he doesn't uh, successfully attack us within those three times, then we got lucky. But more than likely, he will attack us. Okay? And it'll be a building that is gone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trade in the Merchant's Guild. Okay, I'm going to discard it. And then I'm going to gain two blue contact tokens. One, two. Okay? He's up. If there were any more contact cards out there that he could get, he'd get that and get two points. There aren't any. So now he's going to try to attack us. He's going to draw the first card off the top of the stack. He's going to look for either this symbol or this symbol in my tableau. Nice state here. There aren't any. So he failed the attack. 
I'm going to keep this off to the side here. And that'll be our attack stack, so I know how many times he attacked. Okay, so it goes back to me. Okay, and then I'm going to... I'm going to spend these two blue contact tokens, which equals the distance here, to make a deal with this card. Okay, so I spend the two contact tokens, I slide it underneath my deals here, and then I get one of these wild card resources here. Wild resources, and I, I'll get them every round during the production. Now. Okay, it goes back to him. He's going to attack us for a second time. Okay, nothing out there. We don't have to worry about it. But if there was a worker symbol or a card symbol out here somewhere, he'd raise that. Okay, so it goes back to me again. Now I need to get some contact tokens, some gray ones, so I can start building. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build. Okay, I'm going to build the docks here, which will cost me one gray contact token, because that's the distance. And as soon as it's built, I'll get one iron. Okay, now I'm hoping this card he pulls won't be a card with the iron or, uh, you know, the wild resource symbol on it. Let's see here. Got lucky. It's got a worker on it. Okay, so that is his third attempt to attack us. He couldn't successfully attack us. He's done for the, the round. Okay, he's going to pass on his next round, technically. Okay, so it goes back to me. Let's see here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trade these two resources in to get two gray contact tokens. Okay, so then I'll go to him. Now he will officially pass. It goes back to me. Okay, so I'm going to spend two gray contact tokens here. To build this guy here, which is a distance of two, and this is an action. So that one is I spend one red uh, contact token to gain one victory point, may activate it twice. Okay, so again, he passed, so it goes to me again. I'm going to spend this gun here. I'm going to get three red contact tokens. Okay, and then I'm going to spend them, I'm going to spend two of them to gain two victory points. Okay, now when you have something like this where it says maybe activate it twice, you can do it once and then do something else and come back and do it again. Or you can do it both at one time like I did here. So let's see here. What else can I do? Um, can't build anymore. So I'm, out of, I'm out of great contact tokens and I already spent my action to do it. Um, I think I'm going to have to pass, unfortunately. Yeah, I think this. Unfortunately, I think this is what I'm gonna have to do. I could, I could raise this one card, but it seems like kind of a waste. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna hold off. Okay, so I'm gonna pass, which means I'm done. All right. Now we do the clean fees. So any unused resources go away, along with all of this stuff that. You know, you placed out on your board. I'm going to keep these closed because they're coming back. Okay, and then we go into the lookout phase again. Now for the 